Good morning and welcome to AI Daily. Today is Tuesday, June 13th, and we got a great show for you today. We got three good stories from Salesforce to OpenAI to a Llama Adapter. So let's kick off with Llama Adapter. So Llama Adapter is a bilingual multimodal instruction model. So really building upon Llama, taking in various inputs. You know, we've talked about multimodal before. This lets you take in various inputs that isn't just text, but traditional Llama. So images, audio, 3D point clouds. Connor, give us some more color. What is Llama Adapter? Yeah, it's designed around composability and compatibility. So it integrates with Llama, ImageBind from MetaAI, or Falcon from the UAE, or Stable Diffusion from Stability, or Langchain from Langchain. Um, it was, it's a way for training Llama models, essentially, to integrate all these other parts of different models. Um, as we mentioned, Falcon, ImageBind, they sent some, they showed some demos here uh, on their recent tweet of how Llama Adapter connects with these different models and how it can fine tune them for taking in images or for taking in specific instructions in a way that a normal Llama can't. Pretty powerful. Farb? Yeah, you know, I think there's a few things going on here. One is we've talked about this before where this model makes that model better and then that model makes this model better and there is this continuous sort of feeding off of each other to improve things at a more rapid and rapid pace. This seems like a great example of that. There's also this almost casualness with which we're coming out with things that are like, oh yeah, by the way, this thing can just take a, you know, point cloud and tell you exactly what it is. And, you know, maybe throw some audio in it and, you know, it'll generate an entire, you know, two hour movie about this character that it uh, invented that was driving a car that the point cloud was based on. And then you gave me a little bit of audio with some, you know, babbling brook water and I've turned it into a epic movie. Now, obviously we're not at the epic movie point yet, but you can see these things starting to build on top of each other. And there's almost this, you know, something, something like this dropped, you know, a year ago, it would have, uh, it would have been the, the greatest technological advancement in human history. Uh, and today it's just a, it's just another tweet that people are, are trying to wor work through. So that, that's super impressive to see. Uh, and it was just really impressive to see some of the stuff that it's capable of doing, you know, taking, taking a point cloud and deciding that it's a car and, you know, putting it next to a river because there was some audio that way. This stuff is just getting started. We are rapidly approaching human being. Yeah, combining models like this was very expensive before, very impractical, but Llama Adapter really like working on to make it cheaper, to make it faster, to make it easier. So very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. So if you've been using Llama and you want to do some multimodal abilities with it, check out Llama Adapter, great tool. Uh, let's move on to our second story, which is Salesforce AI. So there is an absolute ton of news here. Salesforce has been, you know, a little bit hurt in the public markets and they just dropped this kind of big tons of updates around AI. So they had everything from sales AI to marketing AI to their own code AI to something to interact with Tableau. They put out a lot far. I don't know if anything stood out to you particularly, but to me, you know, a lot of these tools were stuff startups were building and they just released a ton of them right into Salesforce. So anything that stood out to you? I haven't, I haven't used it yet. I don't know if this stuff is mind bending for your average Salesforce customer right now. And if it isn't, it's going to be. Salesforce isn't going anywhere. This is, I think, their first big step into the space. They wanted to make some noise. They wanted to say, hey, we're not want launching one little thing. We're launching a suite of things. They're going to, this is obviously just the beginning. You know, they didn't say that this is the, the end of AI at Salesforce. It's obviously just the beginning of AI at Salesforce. One of the things that I saw that I thought was pretty cool was this idea that you could customize sales pages, customize emails for different customers based on what you have in the CRM. So, you know, everyone and their mom talks about how you can use AI to customize things for your customers, but do you have all the data? Do you have information about your customer in your CRM that actually can, you know, make this powerful AI that could theoretically customize it into anything? You know, you could put your customer's face inside a, a, the, the website that they're scrolling through to buy something if you had a picture of their face. So, you know, Salesforce has massive amounts of data on their customers. So who is better positioned to leverage these new tools and technologies to really customize that stuff for their, for their customers because they have the data on their customers. So, you know, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing a lot more from Salesforce in the future. Benioff is an absolute force of nature. 
and I'm sure they've got many more big things coming and probably a lot of acquisitions coming. They, they love acquiring a good company that fits into their world. And I bet you we're going to see a lot of that from them. Yeah. We've yeah. seen tweets for months. We've seen tweets for months and months, of course, of like, oh, look at this new Salesforce killer. And then Salesforce comes out with nine, 10 new products all inside of an AI cloud suite that most of which look like they're going to launch this year or at least be available for people to use this year. Um, Ethan, on your question earlier, like I think the most interesting part to me was their Einstein trust layer that everything's built around. This new enterprise layer that really gives the data security and compliance that other, other solutions from other random companies don't have. Yeah. Um, it is interesting that the entire thing is built off of Einstein's, Einstein's likeness. I don't know if they have the license to do that, but I guess they probably do. I'm not sure. Do you need that? Uh -uh. Open do we know if they're science? using, are they partnering with OpenAI or are these some of their own models? Do we know? Yeah, they're using OpenAI for compliance, I believe, of like okay. checking. In, uh, and then I think they're using on their own AWS, like Salesforce Cloud, they have Adapt and Cohere models. So, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the, just the big thing that stood out to me, like I mentioned to you all, is the breadth and speed at which they dropped a lot of these. I think, you know, we had seen hundreds of startups working on, okay, you know, email marketing for this or field service for this or sales qualification with GPT. So many different use cases that they all just jumped out in pretty much six months all across the Salesforce suite. So definitely something to keep an eye on if you're in this space. Our last story of today is OpenAI releasing another huge suite of updates. So between function calls to between cheaper models, um, updated steerable versions of GPT-4. I'm going to ask you guys the same question. Farb, anything that stood out here to you? There was a lot of news they dropped. They could have dropped any one of these things as its own story, and it would have been huge. 75% reduction in cost of GPT-3.5, I think it was. The function yep. calling stuff that they showed off just looked absolutely mind-bending. It's like, hey, why don't we just, you know, as one of seven updates here, why don't we just obviate seven different startups that are trying to uh, accomplish the, the, same, the same thing? Uh, and, you know, like we've said many times, the pace of development in AI is not slowing down. The folks at a OpenAI have, have certainly not squeezed all the juice from the fruit yet. They're probably just getting started just like everybody else is. They've got many big things coming. If they can package seven huge stories like this in one update that must mean that they have many more big stories coming down the pipeline they can't even probably do it slow enough to release them one at a time because they'll never get them all out in time so i wow. thought that was just you know really really awesome to see from them and again it's almost like these things are just being casually dropped stuff that would have been world-changing news a year ago a hundred percent. You know, a lot of people are like, hey, what is OpenAI's moat? And, you know, Sam kind of answered this question last week and he said it's our pace of innovation. And I think they make this so clear week after week with all these blog posts. Um, the functions were super interesting to me. Connor, can you touch more on these functions? You know, people have worked on, hey, how can we get GPT-4 to output JSON? How can we connect it to other tools? They've kind of wrapped all this really nicely. Um, can you explain the functions to us a little deeper? Yeah, normally like an open source model, you would use a like tool former, like we talked about before, which lets it directly use logits to use these tools. But you can't do that with OpenAI because we can't fine tune GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. Yeah. But then they have fine tuned it directly, um, is what they said in the blog post, at least they fine tuned it to be able to take in functions. So you take in a JSON schema of how to call a function and then it'll just output a function and pre-fill that JSON data, and then you can call the code itself. This is honestly huge because you can, before with open AI models, it would be, have to be like a lang chain or like a guidance. And it's a lot more difficult to do and it's less fluid. It's less dynamic. And it takes up a lot of your context to tell the model to do this. Now, zero context, you can say, Hey, here's some functions. Um, here's how to call them. And then boom, like the demos they've shown, we'll show on the side here, but very good. So yeah, speaking of context, they forex the context window from awesome. 4,000 tokens to 16,000 tokens, NBD. Yeah, they, they talked about GPT-4, 32,000 context coming soon as well, trying to get rid of that wait list. And yeah, back on the functions, I loved uh, how easy they made it to mm -hmm. create a SQL query, for example. You know, it used to be, okay, let me embed some of my database, let me use another tool. Now you just hit the open AI functions. So pace of innovation, always keeping up amazing.
uh, as always very well with other models of course so like clip or like stable diffusion you can tell it how to call clip tell it how to call stable diffusion yep um stuff you couldn't really do that well before absolutely as always what else are y'all seeing what else has been interesting you i thought it was uh i don't know if there was anything quite frankly that new about it but there was a lot of buzz flying around twitter with this guy who was you know snapping his fingers and changing this uh, video that he was in and he was using a combination of runway uh, and, and 11 labs and, and quite frankly i think it's something you could have done it's kind of tough to keep the time straight it felt like it was six months ago but it was probably maybe six weeks ago you could have also done this uh, but for some reason i think creators are starting to get their hands on some of this stuff and you know these creators have their own audiences on twitter and sure, maybe some hardcore AI dev made a little bit of a, a version of this and, and showed it off. But I think you're starting to get this stuff into creators' hands, just normal creators being like, oh, I can actually take a little bit of runway ML. I can use 11 labs. And I can create things that people have never seen before. And it, it was cool to see, you know, flying around the web. Even somebody else kind of was like, oh, I saw that cool thing. And I did my version of it. And they, they posted their version of it. So I think we're going to start seeing these types of things getting into the, the creator economy, the social media influencer world really rapidly. Because if you think about it, you haven't seen a ton of that. It's not like every TikTok influencer, every Instagram influencer yeah. is posting AI generated content today. Yeah. Give it a few more weeks and that may change. Absolutely. Especially, especially as we heard from Meta the other day, like Instagram itself will have that built in soon enough. So just coming more and more. Connor, what about you? Yeah, I saw Byteformer from uh, Apple Research, actually. Not a lot of research out of Apple that's open, but this was. It's Byteformer. It's a classification, image classification model that only works over bytes. Um, a lot of minutia and details and nuance here, but the coolest thing here was that they can fully analyze an image for explicit content, et cetera, by masking 90% of the image, but still achieving 71% accuracy on an image net. Classification. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, similar to Facebook's Metabyte, I think, but, you know, works on device and with Apple and with their thesis. So cool to see. Um, I saw this about an hour ago, but Nat Friedman, Daniel Gross, if you don't know them, great investors, operators, been in the AI space for a while. They dropped the Andromeda cluster. So pretty insane. 2,500 H100s that are available for startups they're involved with. Um, this probably, this is 60, 80, almost a hundred million dollar investment worth of GPUs. So where did they get 2,100? <laughs> uh, you know, Godspeed to them, but this, where are they this keeping very them? basic, very basic website. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe they just in someone's house or Go -host co located you know. somewhere. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, 2,500 of the most powerful GPUs available. 10 exaflops, 3.2 terabytes of infinity band. It's pretty crazy. So if you want to train something, that's a, that's a place to look. If you've been needing GPUs, that's a place to look. Um, and we'll link it. I, I could honestly see a lot of other, this to me seems like if you're not doing this as a venture fund of, of size, what are you yeah. doing? Absolutely. You're going to host yeah. another tech week event. <laughs> Hello. Take your million dollar tech week event and, and give it to your, you know, Portcos or your soon to be portcos and, and let them go change the world. It's true value add investing. Yeah. For for some context, that's seven thousand pounds of GPUs, which is enough to train Llama sixty five V in just ten days. So it's wow. done by pounds now. Uh I mean that's how we in America do it. I don't know how you guys do it, but <laughs> how, many, how many kilos of GPUs is that? Thirty two hundred. So ask go ask chat GPT. Absolutely insane. Well, thank you all, as always, for tuning in to AI Daily, and we will see you again tomorrow.